Excuse me. Excuse me. What in the world are you thinking? Me, Gene, the first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. All right, all right, all right. I know I'm a day behind. I apologize. I apologize. Calm down, everybody. Everybody wants their new world podcast, brother. I get it. I get it, okay? But I got to sit down and watch AEW Dynamite from this past Wednesday. Uh, Excalibur, Tony, Taz on, on commentary in Indianapolis. Indianapolis, okay? Let's, let's get right down to it. They start the show with Mox. Mr. Moxley saying he's the baddest man pajama on the planet. On the planet. And he says, nobody, nobody is tough enough, rough and tough to take him on. But guess what? There was somebody. And that person is Hangman Page. He's back. And the best part about this whole thing, even though they were brawling throughout the night, you know, they were still fighting, is the fact that <laughs> Moxley goes... Hey, I don't know if you want any part of this because you do you remember what happened last time or did you forget because of the concussion thing? And I was like, damn. Then they brawl it out, man. It, it, it's I, I this is the next. This is where we're sending this story with Moxley with Hangman Page. That's a good segue for that. Um, we shall see uh, where it's gonna go. And I, I really like that you don't remember. And I was like, damn, <laughs> Moxley's vicious. Well, you want to talk about vicious Brian Danielson versus Dax Hardwood? Oh my God, physical as can be, Brian Danielson for the win on the tap out. But gosh darn it, to start the show with this level of a match, solid match, solid hits. It it hurt me. My chest was hurting after seeing this match. I was like, holy shit, like. This is what I I love about this sh- like dynamite itself is that we do get high, awesome pro wrestling at its finest. You know, and, and, you know, and people are like oh what about WWE? WWE has some good wrestling matches, but the problem with WWE is they're about the entertainment value. So the the only time I think they really let the wrestlers just let loose is on pay per views. You know, when you do a Monday Night Raw, when you do a SmackDown, it, yeah, yes, yeah, so it's telling a story, but it's more entertainment than, than actual wrestling. Then the actual wrestling doesn't come until a pay-per-view. There's nothing wrong with it. WWE has used this formula for a very long time and have been successful successful with it. So, but when I turn over to AEW, AEW Dynamite, I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to just get into some pure wrestling action, and I'm going to see some great moves and great, some great things. And Brian Danielson versus uh, Dax Hardwood um, of FTR, fantastic. Solid match. If you're going to watch something this week, you should watch that. More Mox and Paige in the back still fighting. Then we had Renee with uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society. Society. I don't know why I messed that up. And uh, Blackpool Combat Club, which is pretty much no more because you got your leader knocked out. We'll get to that in a bit. But uh, Claudio's going for the Ring of Honor World Championship at Final Battle. The pay-per-view here on the 10th of this month um, against the Ocho himself. Uh, he's done talking. And, yeah, we're going to see that match at Ring of Honor Final Battle. Now we got a pay-per-view to build to in the next week and a half. So I'm excited. Good old Ring of Honor. Um, we have the TNT Championship. Joe versus AR Fox. AR Fox just signed with AEW. He is all elite. And this dude blew my socks away a couple weeks ago. Like, this guy was fantastic. And I saw him on AEW Dark. And this dude is just, he's just got a great, just, I don't know. He great personality, great moves in the ring, great charisma. AR Fox all the way, baby. And Joe wins, but we all knew that. Um, then Wardlow. Says he's coming. He's coming hard. He's going to come for Joe. He's going to come on Joe. He's going to come for the, the TNT Championship. I think I think the word coming and come in professional wrestling kind of needs to be taken out. Uh, you know, it's hard, though. I remember I had to cut a promo on uh, this dude named Mercer. And in a, I was very serious. We were at this gym in William, um, 
in Williams, Arizona, for Williams uh, Wrestling Alliance, uh, the WWA. And I remember cutting a promo on this dude named Mercer. He's he's fantastic. He's he's great. You know, he he definitely brought it to me, and he's a great talent. And, and much love to Mercer and whatnot. But he, <laughs> I remember I had to shoot this promo. We were in the in the ring in the gym, and it was at this abandoned school. I'm sorry for going off topic real quick, but I had to cut a promo. I had to tell Mercer that I was gonna I was gonna beat him up and I'm gonna kick his ass and blah blah blah. So very seriously, they had me pick up this um this uh, weight bag, uh, punching bag. That's what it was. I had a punching bag. I, I came in the frame, threw it down, and I'm like Mercer, this blah blah. I can't remember the day. This blah 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 blah. blah I'm coming. I'm coming hard, Mercer. So you better be ready when I come. <laughs> And then everyone started laughing, and I didn't know. I was like, "What?" And then then it dawned on me. I was like, "Oh, wow, <laughs> that sounded very sexual." So anytime the word "coming" is used, it like winter is coming. Like you know, I, I got a dirty mind, folks. What can I say? But Wardlow's coming. He's gonna come on <laughs> Samoa Joe. So he's coming hard. And Samoa Joe has proclaimed he is the king of TV because he's got two titles, two titles, two titles. Then we had a weird Hobbs package. Then we had this thing with Hook, you know, Taz's son. And he, it was a breakdown of how he won his match. You know, I don't care. But, yeah, sure. I want to get to the meat and potatoes, folks. The meat and potatoes of this show. MJF. Holy shit. I mean, even Tony Schiavone. Tony on live TV called MJF a piece of shit. Um, I already already saw little bits and pieces of this. I already knew that he hit William Regal with the brass knuckles and everything in the back of the head. And, you know, but I, I finally got to sit down and watch the whole promo. And, man, MJF is so damn good on the mic. We're in the MJF era of this, uh, of this title run. You know, he told him, like, uh, Regal... Sent him an email after he was after uh, MJF was beat up by the firm, and he's like, "Yo, you know, in, you know, put you don't need to use the diamond ring. You need to go grab the brass ring, and that's why Regal helped MJF, you know, get the title and whatnot." But but this goes much deeper because MJF is such a great asshole. He's the he's the most like he is he is the asshole, and he's my asshole. Like this guy is is purely talented and just. Still, be, still being a heel and mentioning in 2024, January 2024, the bidding shall begin on his contract. And he hopes that his buddy Khan, not Tony, St. Nick gives him a call or the game trips. And I was like, fuck, like, I, I don't even I, I, I'm wondering if Tony's like saying, like, hey, do this, say this, say this. Or it's just MJF being MJF because he's been saying this all the time. Every time he goes on a podcast, he talks about WWE. He talks about this. He talks about that. And, man, he goes and he shows a new title. He throws away the title he had. And he has a new title that has his scarf uh, imprinted on the leather and stuff like that. And I think it looks dope. I, I, I think it looks dope. I don't – I'm not really a big – like, I don't know. When 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 – Wrestlers do their own versions of a title. You know, that's their version of a title. And, you know, we've had the classic one, Stone Cold Steve Austin, John Cena had the spinner with the U.S. title and everything like that. And this one, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I'm glad he just changed the strap instead of cha- like changing the, the plates and everything like that. So I, I think the title looks good. And lo and behold, he hit William Regal in the back of the head. But before he did that, he's cutting. He's like, this title reign is going to be longer than blah, blah, blah. He mentions Hulk Hogan. He mentions, uh, the you know, the, these legends and stuff like that. And also he's like, he, Bruno San Martino is going to turn in his grave. And I was like, oh, that's where my jaw dropped. I was like, uh, in my mind, in the back of my mind, as a pro wrestling fan, I was like, you piece of shit. And I was like, oh, God damn, he got me. He got me. And then when he hit William Regal, uh, Brian Danielson came out with one boot on. No sock, you know, to check on William Regal, and they 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 carded him out. The the only thing that was bad with the card out was the the neck brace that he had on his neck. You know, um, when they applied it, like they didn't put it on correctly for the chin part to be on his chin. So like his he kept on his he kept on slipping like the the chin part kept on slipping up to his nose, and they kept on trying to fix it, trying to fix it, you know, make it as believable as possible, but. That that was funny to me because every time it slipped, I saw somebody like try to fix it. They try to fix it, you know. And uh, Regal had a little blood in his mouth, but I don't know how long Regal's gonna be out. 
But we're in the MJF era. And when Tony was like, you piece of shit, I was just like, damn, this is damn good television, brother. This is damn good television. I'll tell you what. And MJF's my guy. He's my champ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we had Ethan Page come out, uh, you know, talking about this whole Dynamite Diamond Battle Royale that's coming to Winter Coming. It's coming. It's coming hard. It's going to come diamonds. Yeah. Diamond rings. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he uh, interrupts Ricky Stark's match with um, uh, with Ari, uh, Davar, Davari, and Ricky Starks wins. And But Ricky Starks is going to face MJF at Winter is Coming hard uh, for the AEW World Championship. And I like what MJF said. He goes, yo, you're going to take that little bit of money out of your pocket and you're going to pay. I'm going to be an event. I am an attraction. So you're not going to get me every week. You're not going to get me all the time. You're going to get me when you're going to get me. And then I'll come all over you. <laughs> Good old MJF. Then we had Tony Schiavone in the back with uh, Dr. Brick Baker and Jamie Hayter. And then uh, she re- Hayter requested that Tony sits down with her next week. No Soraya. Where is Soraya? Um, no one knows. Even after a win. Even after a win, she's not on television for two weeks. So maybe she'll come back next week. Um but we had uh, Willow Night- Nightingale versus Anna J. Uh, I like the fact that everyone's using that weird Jericho intro for the Jericho Appreciation Society. Like, you know, sports entertainers. We sports entertainers. It's with you, you know. And, but this match was okay. Ruby Soho is back. Ruby Soho is back. Finally. I, I was talking to Big Daddy about this. I was like, I remember when she went over there, how big of a deal it was. Like, oh, my God, you know, and then, then she got hurt and stuff like that. It's, now she's back, and I'm wondering if she's going to be uh, building towards uh, facing Jamie Hayter for that AEW Women's Championship. We shall see where that goes, but Ruby Soho's back. There's this great backstage thing where QT Marshall challenges Orange Cassidy for uh, the all – all Atlantic um, World Champ uh, Championship, All Atlantic Championship at Rampage in a lumberjack match, and Orange Cassidy with with not missing a beat. Okay, it's a lumberjack. Okay, QT's like, why is everyone? Then Tony cuts him off. He's like, why does everyone interrupt me? Great stuff. Uh, Jade uh, Car- uh, Cargill's uh, TBS Championship celebration coming out, looking fabulous as always. What the fuck is with this bow wow shit? Like. I didn't even know Bow Wow was still a thing. I didn't even know he was like around, but he so he has this fascination with Jade, which he should because Jade is gorgeous. Um, but Bow Wow, I I just I don't understand where we're going with this because they've had a few things, and I don't know. I I you could tell me, folks. I I just don't care. But apparently Bow Wow does. Apparently he does. He needs the limelight. Um, House of Black package from last week now that the house of black are back uh, you know now aw's like yo we got to start cranking out these stories we got to start cranking out returns and stuff like that because it's the almost the end of the year then we got we got man it's almost the end of the year jeez you know we got ring of honor final battle it's, it's crazy dog this this year passed by this is to just to let everyone know this is season four episode 77 of the New World Podcast. That means I have done 77 podcasts of the New World Podcast. The reason why season four is because there is other seasons, uh, you know, and the reason I keep them in seasons is just to keep track. But this is the longest reigning NWP uh, season of I have ever done. Keeping up every single week with uh, the love of my life. Not, not my daughter, not my wife, which I do. They are the love of my life. But professional wrestling as its own. 77 episodes, and the first one is Hell in a Cell. That's crazy, y'all. We've still got some more down the pipe that's coming. I hope everybody's enjoying the New World Podcast. I hope you are listening and enjoying uh, these th- these shows with me as I review them. So the claim to uh, are, are going to be on a rampage. They were in the back, and they scissored me daddy ass, all that good stuff. I still need to get me a scissor me daddy ass shirt. Now to the main event, the best of seven, the Elite versus Death Triangle. Um, whew, great match, great freaking match, great spots. Doesn't disappoint. I think this is the best one of the three. 
they've had so far. The fourth match is in two weeks, and winter is coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Death Triangle is now 2-0, and oh, and the Elite is 1-0. and oh. And after the show, uh, Kenny Omega uh, cut a promo, and, you know, he has a lot going on, too, because we got Wrestle Kingdom coming up next month with him and Will Ospreay. Uh, it's like the Ring of Honor final battles coming up. Wrestle Kingdom, the Royal Rumble, all this great stuff. It's, it's good to be alive, folks. It's good to be alive. But the Elite versus Death Triangle, I feel like this is their best one out of the three so far. From AEW, uh, uh, Full Gear and everything like that to now. And also, too, them making fun of Punk the last couple of matches, you know. This is great shit, man. I'm glad the Elite's back. I, I, I love the Elite, and I'm, I'm so glad they're back, and they got a, don't you cry no more, you know, the, such a great intro to a song, and it just matches the Elite 100%, and if you haven't watching uh, Be Elite, uh, it's, it's been great. There's The last episode is called F the Elite, so watch that, check it out. Uh, I give this show a solid four out of five. I enjoyed it very, very much. And MJF, I love you. I, I, I love you so much. Your action figure's right behind me. Um, and I got your shirt on right now. Yeah, that's right, baby. Ooh, MJF, my champion, the asshole, my asshole, because he's always coming. Uh, yeah, so four out of five. Tell me what you thought of uh, AEW's uh, Wednesday Night Dynamite. What did you love? What did you hate? What did you, what, what, what made you tick? During the show. Then after that. Guess what you're going to do. You're going to like and subscribe. You're going to share with your grandma. Share with your grandma. Share with the bum down at Walmart. And I can't believe I did this with a stuffy nose. Because of my allergies. And boogies are all coming down my face. But it's coming y'all. It's coming. Boogies is coming. Winter is coming. In two weeks. Okay. That's it. That's all. I am KMB, the sexy ninja, and the new world podcast is for life. This is. It's funny. You said I had much to learn, and yet you're the one who made a deal with the devil. So allow me to leave you with the same words you left me seven long years ago.